Hi there. Let's now look at projectile motion and what it's all about. Projectile motion. We've all seen motion in a straight line, or it's called linear motion, of maybe a car traveling on a road. Well, it looks like a spaceship on a road, but, well, excuse me for my bad drawing. Um, what is projectile motion all about is the, the best example that's that I can think of at the top of my head is that of a cannonball. The cannonball is launched from one point and has to hit the enemy territory. The trajectory, well you come across this word a lot now that you're entering tra projectile motion. Trajectory is the path that an object takes um, when it's moving. All right. So the trajectory of the cannonball is something like this. Boom! It hits the enemy territory. All right. What is different in this case compared to this one? In this case of the cannonball, uh, let me take a different color. This doesn't look so nice. Okay. In the case of a cannonball, um, the velocity vector, okay, is at an angle theta to the horizontal axis. If we draw the coordinate axes, x and y, your car's velocity is in this direction, parallel to the x-axis. But here for the cannonball, it's like this, at theta. Okay, let's call that v naught. Okay? Remember in physics, whenever you have a vector in at an, angle, at an inclination, the first ever thing you want to do is you want to resolve it into parallel and perpendicular components or horizontal and vertical components of, 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 of velocity, okay? Um, the reason we do that is always it's, it's, it's always convenient to deal with straight lines, either horizontal or vertical, instead of inclined lines, right? Just for our convenience, we do that. What we also get by resolving a vector into horizontal and perpendicular components, I mean vertical components, is C. Suppose this is the velocity, initial velocity, and suppose this is the velocity in the x direction, velocity in the y direction, okay? And this is the object. What v naught x shows me is at any point of time during its motion, I get to know what is its speed in moving forward okay in moving forward that is in a straight line that's the horizontal line in moving forward what the velocities I'm able to get from V naught of X well from V naught Y what I get is at any point of time what is the velocity or rather what is the speed at which the object is climbing or falling down alright so from just this one velocity and the angle we found out such an amazing thing we know as to how fast or slow it's moving in the forward or reverse direction and also how fast or slow it's moving either up or down right that that gives us a better perspective let's just suppose I say at, at, t at a time t maybe two seconds the object is here if I know what velocity it had in the y direction I'd be able to say how high it is right because I have the time and the velocity same with the x direction if I know the position of the particle or uh, if I know the, how much time it's been in the air I can tell you what speed it'll be on or how much distance it's covered or vice versa right that's the reason we resolve vectors so now that we know that this cannonball is uh, launched at an angle of theta let's resolve it and let's get the components suppose this is y and this is x and this is the X direction component. Let's let's do the Y direction component this way here, so that we have a little triangle to work with and uh, nice trigonometric ratios we can apply. So this is theta, and this is 90 degrees, and this is v naught, right? So from our trigonometry, what do we know? We know this. So katoa. So sine opposite hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. So sine theta here is v 
let's call this v naught y, right? The vertical component is v naught y, and this is v naught x. Oops, it, it became Vooks, I'm sorry. <laughs> so sine theta is v naught y over v naught. And cos of theta is v naught of x over v naught, right? v naught of x is adjacent, and v naught y is the opposite. So we now have the vertical component of velocity that is v o y v naught y equals v naught times sine of theta all these vectors have the vector symbol so um, let me, uh, excuse me for not drawing them right now the horizontal component is v naught of x and that's given by v naught of cos of theta okay so we have these definite numbers now all right now let's look at let's talk about one concept right now one of the first ones Let's talk about the distance traveled by the cannonball. Okay? If you draw this trajectory here, there can be two distances. Now that it's been launched into the air, it, it, it is taking flight, there can be two distances. One is this distance. It's also called the range, or r. And the other distance is this, right? Well, even that is a distance because it is moving away from the ground. So even that can be calculated. And it is called the height, or uh, at any point, right? So the, the way we do this, we, the way we calculate these are pretty simple. They're going to follow the same equations of laws of motion as put forth by Newton just with uh, uh, we just have to include the uh, angle or, or theta here so what is distance equal to in general it is speed times time correct that's all it is so let's say the time taken by the cannonball is t seconds okay the speed now I'm talking about the range here okay we need to get the range so the speed for range range since we're uh, talking about range in the x direction range is on the x direction it's parallel to the x-axis right so we need to consider the horizontal component of velocity for speed here right so it should be v naught of cos of theta times v naught cos of theta times t is distance or let's call it x here okay this is very important okay let's now look at the height let's uh, call it y okay what do we know from the basic Newton's law um, formula distance or s is given by v naught of t plus half a t squared correct but because the only acceleration it is subjected to when it, when we're talking about a projectile motion is the acceleration due to gravity or the Earth's acceleration, right? So since it, it is falling down, it is considered as minus g. I think we've done that before. So let's consider it's v naught of t, v naught times t minus half gt squared. Okay? So, but, but v naught here is what? Because we're talking about vertical distances, we're going to talk about the vertical component of velocity, which is v naught times sine theta times t minus half gt squared. Excellent. Now, I want to I want to find out how much range has been covered. Okay, the, the distance that's been covered, uh, or I want to find out x. Correct. And if I want to find out x. I do have theta, I have v naught given in the problem generally because I know that this launched at this initial velocity at this angle. But I do not have t. So let's first f solve for t and then come back and substitute in this first equation. Now, pay attention here in the second equation. I, I, I think I can solve for t from here. I think I can get something out here. So how do we solve for it? The first thing to do is to understand the height of the, uh, th these are rather 
changes in, 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 in distance, okay? Like the change of position that gives you the distance traveled, right? So this is a change in height, actually. Sorry, I didn't include that before. So at time zero, the object is at zero height, right? It starts at the ground. And at time t seconds, it's also at a height of zero. So if you look at the entire time taken to, to travel, the object has not gained any height. It started at zero and ends at zero. So let's put a zero here. E naught sine of theta times t minus half gt squared. So can you factor t out from here? I think we can. Sine theta minus half gt. So, uh, this is zero. So t equals zero or v naught sine of theta minus half gt equals zero. Let me take a different color here. Let's take a nice red. So if we solve for this, uh, what do we get? V naught sine theta equals half gt, right? So t equals, t 2 goes here, 2 times V naught sine theta over g. This is the time taken. Now, now the reason I have done this, I've, I've got an expression for t, is because I didn't have t to start with, right? So if we have t in terms of what we already have, we can, we can solve for it easily, right? We already have the initial velocity, we have the initial angle of launch, and g is the acceleration due to gravity, or approximately 10 meters per second squared, right? This is 10, not 16. Okay. Now, how about substituting this in this equation? We have x equals v naught cos of theta times t, right? So this is the uh, horizontal distance traveled. So how about we do, we put this value for t here. So v naught cos of theta times 2 times v naught sine of theta over g. What do you get? 2 v naught squared sine of theta cos of theta. Excellent. What do we know about uh, this from trigonometry? What is 2, rather, what is sine of 2 theta equal to? It's 2 sine theta cos theta. So that's what we have here, 2 sine theta cos theta. So let's put that here. V naught squared, what's well, not, oh my v's are really bad. V naught squared times sine of 2 theta over g is the horizontal distance traveled. Congratulations, you've just found out an expression for the range of the projectile. Given the initial velocity and the angle of launch, you can very well derive how far it'll travel. Just imagine, if you are given the initial velocity of a missile and the angle of launch, you can tell how much distance it's going to travel and which enemy territory it's going to hit. <laughs> All right, see you later. Thanks.